Hello everybody, and welcome to this introductory video. In this course, you should learn how to become an ethical hacker from scratch. So we can also assume that if you now have experience in ethical hacking, that by the end of it, you will be at a high intermediate level. The first sections of this course will teach you how to create your own lab so that you can practice hacking on your computer. You'll learn how to install Linux systems, interact with them and set up other systems, and try to hack them. Then we're going to move into our four main penetrations testing sections. One, network penetrations testing. Test the security of networks and computers connected to them. Two, gaining access. Gaining access to any computer device using client and server side attacks. 3. Web Applications Penetrations Testing Find vulnerabilities in web applications and use them to compromise the system. 4. Post Exploitations How to control hacked computers and use them to hack other computers. So what is ethical hacking? So first off, you might have noticed that the term ethical hacking is composed of two words. You have ethical and you have hacking. Now hacking. The definition of hacking is quite broad. I mean, it encompasses a very wide range of activities. However, if you actually go to any of the online dictionaries pretty much, and if you type in the term hacking, generally it will say that it has something to do with computers. I cannot say that this is not true. However, that is a small portion of the definition. Rather, instead, the act of hacking is actually having any system, and I mean any system, not just a computer system, not just a digital system. In fact, the system doesn't even need to contain any electrical parts. So literally any system having it do something that you intended it to do, as opposed to what it was designed to do. Now here's one short example that has been cited over and over again. You have a lock, basically. You have a door lock in your house. Everyone has one. I sincerely hope that you have one. And the purpose of that lock is used to prevent intruders. So anybody that does not have a key cannot enter. But people enter without a key anyway, because they pick the lock and then they enter. And that itself could be considered an act of hacking. Also an act of burglary, but that's another subject. Anyway, the ethical side of it would be when you have these large automobile industries, manufacturers, then they hire people. They hire these burglars to come and test their locks. So basically they pay them very good sums of money to go to their factories and try to unlock their cars. This doesn't need to apply only to locks for cars. It can also apply to your door locks. Manufacturers have pretty much all sorts of locks. They hire people to actually try and pick the locks. And then if they succeed in doing it, they pay them a very good sum of money. I do believe that prices for one car manufacturer went up to 1 million euros if you managed to break their locks. But what I'm trying to say here is that the ethical side of it would be when you have permission to do it. When it's within the constraints of the law, and the act of hacking itself can be within the constraints of the law, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. Anyway, we will not be focusing on those types of locks today or during this course. During this course, I will teach you how to penetrate networks, how to exploit systems, how to break into computers, how to compromise routers, etc. You will be able, after you finish this course, after you've absorbed all the information in it, you will gain the ability to do some serious damage. Now because of that, I wish to give you a disclaimer here. So first off, I do not encourage any sort of legal activity. Furthermore, I strongly advised against it and I am against it. So you do not have any legit need to do anything that is against the law with the knowledge that you are going to get during this course because you're gonna get some pretty good information and you can abuse it very easily. It's not that difficult to abuse it. The opportunities are everywhere. They're endless because people tend to use insecure systems. Or they use secure systems 
but they don't know how to operate or configure them. And then in turn, those security systems become insecure. But what I'm trying to tell you is there is really no need. I mean, if you want to do it for the money or something like that, you can make the same amount, if not more, in a perfectly legitimate way. People will pay you to actually test their networks and to see if you can find any vulnerabilities in them and then report them. Perhaps even fix them. However, if you do decide to do something against the law in any country, I am not responsible for it. First off, that is what I want to say. I do not claim any responsibility for it as I have already stated that I am doing this purely for educational purposes. And I do not advocate the use of this material for any sort of illegal purposes. Now, I hope you understand why I had to make this disclaimer. And this is not what I said. These are not just empty words. I really do stand by it. And that is my philosophy as well. In any case, during this course, I will show you numerous examples, methods, and you'll need some prerequisites over which I will go in the next tutorial. But you are in for a ride. So sit down. Be patient. That is a very important thing in this line of work. Patience. Because everybody out there, I mean, if you are looking at this tutorial now, if you type in the term ethical hacking, I'm guessing at some point in your lives, like myself, you've seen a movie that involves some sort of hacking with computers. And you see this terminal, and you just see them typing in somewhere there, and it basically works. It works within five minutes or something like that. Let me tell you something. That has nothing to do with the real world or very little to do with the real world. In the real world, people spend countless sleepless nights trying to do something. Trying to obtain access, trying to bypass a password protected file or something of a kind in the server, trying to escalate privileges, trying to inject in a SQL injection of something of a kind, and they not only spend countless nights doing it, but they also spend a long time planning preparing, and getting a general idea of what they can do, how they can execute an attack, etc. These are not things that you will be able to do within five minutes, after you sit down and open up your desktop computer or whatever. You will need time. You will need patience. But above all, you will need to be curious. Curiosity is one of the first steps here. And obviously, since you actually have chosen to listen to this tutorial, to go through it, you do possess it already. You just need to build on it a little bit more. And you'll be where you want to be. So let's talk about the type of hackers. So first off, you have three main categories of people. There are white hat hackers, gray hat hackers, and black hat hackers. Everything that we will be doing falls into these categories here. So white hats. Those are people whose activities are within the confines of the law. They are people such as pen testers, ethical hackers, people like you and me, and so on. Then you have gray hat hackers, whose activities are bordering between legal and illegal. It's a bit of a shady area there. In addition to that, you have the most known category, which is black hat hackers. And usually, and unfortunately, every time someone hears the term hacking, it is associated with people from black hat world. There are people who conduct all sorts of illegal activities, or conduct activities without any regard for the law. And I don't know, extract new information from certain servers. Credentials, your credit card information, take services down, usually to extract some sort of financial gain. In this lesson, you learned, what is ethical hacking? types of hackers, and what you're going to learn in this course. I bid you farewell, and I hope to see you in the next lesson.